So let us try to prove that our language of exercise 3 is not context free. So to be able to do this, we're going to pick n to be the power, the pumping length p. And that is basically to give us a way to constrain what uh, the middle part could be. And the middle part is the x in the middle and then uv in the, in the sides. So if we pick p to be the pumping length, then we just first need to show that w, the string, uh, is in L3, which is because we know that let n be p, and then we trivially know that w belongs to L3. Next thing we need to show is that the length of uh, w is at least p, and we know that it's 3 times p, so therefore it's at least p. So the first two goals are pretty obvious. The interesting case is, of course, goal 3, which is to show that there exists a string, a pumped string that does not belong to L3. That's what we need to prove. What do we do? We pick i to be 2, and now we have these three assumptions. We have that the string is divided in some way that we don't know. We know that v and y are not empty. X can possibly be empty, but this bit here could be at most P letters. So if it could be at most three letters, it actually creates a problem, and that is why proofs for non-context-free languages are a bit harder than uh, for just non-regular languages. Because the problem here is that we cannot constrain, we don't know where it starts, so it's somewhere in the middle. Whereas with a non-regular language, you always know that it starts on the left-hand side and it goes up to the right-hand side. Here, we really don't know what is the element in the middle. So what that tells us is that there are two cases to consider, right? We just know that vxy has to be small or equal than p, which tells us that it's either within this range so it could be just a right it's at most p so it could just be a it could also be just contained inside the b's or this vxy could be contained in the c's it could also be contained between a and b right so you could have a bit of vxy that is between a and b so it sp spawns across two or it could be between b and c Right, so that would be the second case. But now let's ask ourselves, could it be in three? Could it have three letters? Well, if it had three letters, then it would be, it would have at least P elements, right? So we, it would have to cross all B, but we know that it's at most P, so it could not be in, contained in, cannot encompass the whole P, B. So therefore, it can only have either just one letter, be contained in one of the letters, or on this on um, two letters so we take care of these two cases in the same way we only have to consider how many letters there are so our goal is to show so without loss of generality you can just pick one of the letters and we'll just pick that it only has a's and for this we'll only consider a's and b's and the remaining cases are all the same than these two so let us pick, let's assume that it only has a's. What we need to show is that p plus n, where n is the, what is being pumped, um, does not belong in L3. And as you might imagine, this proof is very similar to what we do when we prove that a of n, b of n is not in the language. Uh, it's, it's the same proof, right? You're going to, essentially, n is going to be not equal. It's greater than 0, which means that you're going to add a, a non- zero amount here, which is going to differ from these two uh, powers. So that's going to be the easy case. Um, the interesting case is when you have two letters. When you have two types of letters, what you're going to have is a bit of A and a bit of P. And the basic idea is that you will replicate, you're going to have a, a plus something and B plus something else, right? which is not the same as C, at least. So we know that C will be fixed. And we then just need to compare that there are 
fewer C's than A's, and that is enough to conclude that the whole language is not, the whole word is not in L3, right? Because the number of A's, you're going to add something. So either you add something to the left or you add something to the right. So in the slides, I write the whole thing in more detail. Particularly, I, I look at the case where V, where you add something on the left, but not on the right, and then something on the right, but not on the left. And then you have these two cases, which you can then conclude that the whole thing is not uh, language. So in the slides, I'm going to le let you think about uh, another exercise where you have to prove that the language is not regular. Um, basically, I just want you to get the intuition that, in fact, the way you prove that a language is not context-free is very similar to the way you would prove that a language is not um, regular. It just has more corner cases because the condition is harder to prove, basically. Um, and that's it. So after this, we're going to move on to Turing machines. Uh, but I am going to ask you in a homework to prove that a language is not regular using the proof assistant. So thank you.